What's your name, sir? Name is Howard Primer, P R I N E R, like Chris Cotter. And then, what was your address uh, growing up when you went to Maine High School? It's still my mother's address, and it is seven three two one Davis Street, and that's in Morton Grove. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, now uh, you did. Uh, you went to high school with Hillary. Is that correct? Yes, we were in high school for three of our four years together, but our class was the unfortunate class that got divided into our senior year. I've heard of that. Yeah, that was pretty traumatic. Uh, it was uh, unfortunate, but we stayed. I mean, the class always views themselves as one class, not two different schools. Um, and in fact, I just kind of a quick aside, I led because I was active in student government, as was Joel, as was Hillary, and so on and so forth. I led a drive and we devised a pin that we put out during that year when we were getting ready to be divided, which talked about the fact, and I still have the design somewhere. Oh, really? We will never be divided. You know, So we were very passionate about the fact that we hated having to go to two different schools for our graduation. Wow. So tell me, uh, um, tell me, Howard, um, uh, what's it? Do, when do you recall first meeting Hillary? In my freshman year. Okay. Uh, through student government. Okay. In classes. You know, so we, we, were, we were good friends and became better friends as we went to school uh, from our freshman year on. So what was back then, what was your, like, when you first met her, what was your impression of her? Well, my impression of her then and still is that Hillary was probably the brightest person that I had the good fortune of knowing in my lifetime. And that was true at the time, and it was true throughout high school, and it certainly proved to be an accurate assessment thereafter. And you won't get an argument from a lot of other people on that. Um, now, you served with her in student government? Yes. So, if you look at the yearbook, you'll see a lot of pictures of it. Yeah. So, tell me, as much as challenging as it might be, do you, do you have any, uh, can you recall any specifics? Uh, um, I'll get to the debate in a minute. Um, do you have any uh, favorite or memorable incidents that you recall? with Hillary at the time, either in student governor or out? I don't recall any favorite. I mean, there was, I, I always was fond of Hillary. I enjoyed her company. I enjoyed engaging in conversations with her. We did co-chair a committee of student government uh, called the Cultural Committee. And we were the committee that was put together by the, the faculty to helped to set some rules with regard to student dress and student behavior and stuff like that. And she was the female leader and I was the male leader. Okay. Uh, I, re I seem to recall back that the big question we were trying to come to terms with that caused us so much turmoil was whether women should wear culottes, uh, which of course defined our times because today they wouldn't think twice women wearing culottes, they can wear anything. But back then, the big question was, should we deny women the right to wear culottes? Right. And Hillary and I took a position in opposition to the faculty that, of course, they should be able to wear culottes. Right. And how was, uh, when you were uh, dealing with the administrators, how did that go down when you were talking to them? And do you, what's your impression of how Hillary was um, dealt with the administrators? Well, I think we had some very special and very compassionate and very meaningful administrators. I, I can't say anything negative about the administration of the school. The superintendent was was a very special man, and we developed a good relationship with him. And obviously, that's going to lead to the conversation we're going to have about the debate. Right. Um, so I don't find any fault with the administrators or the, the teachers. I mean, some I like better than others, but that's naturally going to take place when you're in high school. Right. Um, but my, I will tell you that in my personal opinion, 
if I were to say what period of my life is my favorite period of my life, it is without a doubt my high school period. Okay, great. I've enjoyed, of course, being an adult and raising families and things like that. I'm not discounting that. But as a kind of an, an, a period that left an impression on me, that my high school period was very rich. Wow, that's, that's, that's fantastic. So, um, when you, the whole issue with culottes, did, um, do you recall any specific, um, as much as you can, um, how Hillary carried herself or how, well, you know, how, can you recount any, any incidents when she would uh, deal with administrators or deal with other students, especially that, um, that uh, you can recall? Um, I can't recall specific instances. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that I don't recall a time where Hillary was not well composed, rational in her behavior, and practical in her emotions. Right. Now, uh, you were in the Cultural Committee. Now, Ernie Ricketts had told me uh, just in passing a story about the um, there was a committee that was to come up with a new method of elections. Now, uh, while I'm saying this question, now I think I've answered it. it. Was it was I think in Maine South, and you stayed in Maine East the whole time, right? Right. Was, yeah. When they went to Maine South, they were left with having to carve everything out of whole cloth. Yeah. Uh, we had a very long history in Maine East. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, we had an opportunity, uh, but Rick was. He was known to me as Rick Ricketts. Yeah. Uh, Rick and Hillary and I were on an organizational committee at Maine East. Okay. Sort of the organic committee that sort of was involved in rule setting and other things of that nature. Right. Uh, but the rules were pretty well established and all we did was evolve them. Uh, talk to me about like how, uh, what was you know, when you ran into Hillary when she dealt with, what was, and appearance-wise, what was she like? If you had to describe her back then in high school. <laughs> uh, she was not among the more attractive girls in her class. She wore very thick glasses. Uh, I refer to them as Coke bottle glasses. Mm -hmm. um, she, was, she was not very much into proper uh, girly attire. You know, that was not a priority for her, and there were many girls in her class that were very much a part of that. And one of the girls in our class, and it went, went on to become one of the Playboy's centerfolds. Uh, she was also the prom, the, the homecoming queen. Okay. Uh, if, you, if you put her into the same category, she clearly would not be in that group. Right. She really was attracted because of her personality, not because of how she dressed her, how she maintained her looks. Right. So talk to me about um, socializing. Did you, did you, uh, did you go, did you uh, go, as, go as a group or did you uh, socialize with her outside of school? Quite a bit. As a consequence of the debate that you, that they, Joel referenced, but before that we were just one of a whole bunch of people. I, as you know, grew up in Morton Grove, and I was from the Morton Grove, Grove group, but I was more connected to the Park Ridge group. I spent all my social time all with right. people from Park Ridge. So let's, um, let's, well, let's talk I about... Was, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I, no, I don't have anything more. I was just kind of embellishing upon that thing. So, Howard, tell me about uh, the debate. What? Uh, tell me how that came about. And what class were you, etc.? Well, the debate is a is a, a bit of an ironic and a humorous story, and I, I'm surprised that it even has come up and that Joel even remembered it. And, mm. You know, it's one of those historical facts that I don't think is well known at this point. But in 1964. As you may or may not know, and I don't know how old you are, but in 1964 we had a very 
powerful election, national election for president. Right. And the two candidates were running were Barry Goldwater and Lyndon Johnson. Yep. And the debate was hot and heavy over the Vietnam War and, and nuclear bombs and protecting America and things of that nature. Um, the superintendent of our school that year, of all the schools, and at that time there were only three schools, Maine South did not exist, the superintendent wanted to have a mock election. Okay. And went about trying to organize that, and his first order of business was to go to the senior class that was then graduating, and this was in the spring of 1964. Okay. So the election was, of course, in the fall of 64. This was in the spring before we went in home for summer vacation. Uh, so in the spring of 64, he decided he wanted to have a mock election and have it take place at, on all of the high school camps. Okay. Uh, and he then asked me to play the role of Lyndon Johnson. All right. And then he asked the president or, a, or an officer or some, that was somebody that was at the time a powerful part of the Republican Party, the young Republicans of Illinois, and that was Hillary. Okay. To be Barry Goldwater. All so right. Hillary and I were then assigned the responsibility of conducting a series of speeches and debates and other things of that nature at each of the campuses um, over the issues of the time in which she took the role of Barry Goldwater, I took the role of Lyndon Johnson, and out of that, there was going to be an election day in which the students would have a chance to cast a mock up ballot for the candidate of their preference. Okay, so let me uh, clarify on this. This was the superintendent at the time who arranged this? Yes. And how did he, how do you recall, why do you think he picked you and Hillary? Well, it may have come from the fact that we were the co chairmen of the Culture Committee. Okay. It may have come from the fact that we were in student government together. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know. He never disclosed to us what caused that to take place. Uh, uh, but we both were pleased by the opportunity to do it. The seniors didn't want to do it because they were about to graduate and they didn't want to do all the work. I see. So that's so why I picked the juniors the then. That's right. So let's take the, the uncovering seniors, the juniors, and they have to be here another year, so let's make them do all the work. Do you recall, so, do you recall, do you recall the, uh, when he sat you down and told you about this at all? And asked you? I vaguely recall being called to his office. I vaguely recall being surprised that I was being called to his office, and then he told us what he wanted to do, and neither of us hesitated. We both said we'd be happy to do it. Okay. Uh, and the way we did it, actually, unlike today's politics, which Hillary is now a part of, and I had no desire to be a part of, uh, we would get together, at, usually at Hillary's house, and I remember Hillary's mother making cookies for us constantly. We'd get together to work together to prepare our speeches or our debate points and really dig into the facts. So the, my relationship with Hillary, because of that, moved from being social on the basis of our being part of a group of students with a lot in common, to being a lot more intimate during that period of time, intimate not in the, the uh, boyfriend-girlfriend sense, mm -hmm. intimate in the sense of one-on-one -on -one time together. Um, and we spent a lot of time preparing for all of that, and I was, all I can remember is thinking that it was a, an enormous amount of effort. Um, and we would go around, give these speeches, and Hillary and I would have these debates, and uh, she would be Barry Goldwater and do a superb job of speaking in behalf of Barry Goldwater in a very level, uh, calm, modulated tone, unlike today's tendencies. Um, and I would be Lyndon Johnson trying to justify the behavior of the government um, as it was then with regard to Vietnam and the threat of communist incursion and all the other information that was critical. Now, uh, uh, we, we had a wonderful time studying at Hillary's house, and it was always at Hillary's house. I, don't remember, I think maybe once we were at my house, but more often than not, I would head over to Hillary's house and we would sit there and get ready there. And her mother was just a sweetheart to us. 
Her brothers kind of got in the way, but her mother was just weak. And wh- which brothers would get in the way? Do you remember? Hugh, Hugh mainly. Yeah. And uh, uh, how were you, were you raised? As a, your, was your family political? And if they were, were they Democrat or Republican? Yes, I was raised a um, very much a part of a family that had political involvement. My father ran for Morton Grove City Council. Uh, they both were active in the Democratic Party of a sort. And to this day, my mother still is a judge on election day. All right. What's the name of your mother and father? My mother's name is Betty, B-E-T-T-Y, mm. and my father's name was Seymour, S-E-Y-M-O-U-R. Okay. So tell me about like your impressions. Like, is, uh, uh, So you had a good time and in, enjoyed actually preparing together, which is not typical. I, I don't think that today's candidates tend to prepare together. Um, when you, I'm sure they don't. And I'm sure the candidates at that time didn't prepare. No, I, I don't think so. This was a student so of course we enjoyed ourselves while we did. So take us back as much as you can back then, the process and as much detail of when, of actually preparing and what you, the nitty gritty as much as you can back then for over at her house. I, I, well, of course, I can tell you the nitty-gritty of some of the political issues we had to discuss, uh, but they're pretty straightforward because all you have to do is look at the history of the 1964 election, and you know what the debate at that time at the, on the national level was all about. And we were, we were forced to come to terms with that, becoming rounded and understand it. So, so it was about Vietnam to a large extent, about the use of military force, uh, the need for us to protect ourselves from the spread of communism and how aggressively we should do that mm-hmm. uh, and whether we should be aggressive in Vietnam or, sh- or we should be out of Vietnam. There was a lot of stuff that I had to work on that subsequently when I finally got away from high school and was in college, I became a very active part of the civil rights and anti-war movement. Right. So it sort of set the foundation for me to be a part of that um, and I you know, ended up working for Bobby Kennedy when he ran for president. Oh, okay. So how are... So it was a... Go ahead. I'm so so uh, when you... Uh, so the issues were pretty much uh, especially uh, focused on Vietnam. When you sat down with Hillary, did you guys... Um, did you guys debate in the kitchen, practice debate actually, or were you just simply um, writing the issues? What were you actually doing when you were preparing together? We were researching. We were trying to, you know, we were spending, of course, you don't have the internet back in 1964. So what our objective was is to pull together as best we could all of the positions of the people we were supposed to be. Not to insert ourselves into that debate, but to better understand what Barry Goldwater's positions were for Hillary, right. and what William Johnson's positions were for me. And we were very beautiful about that. We did not debate one another. We didn't get very emotionally involved, as I recall. Maybe Hillary did. I don't remember that. We got, this was an academic assignment. Right. We pursued it in an academic way. We were very dedicated to it, to winnowing out every bit of little information we could. And I, I found my time with Hillary extraordinarily precious. And in fact, afterwards, we continued to get together quite often, even after the, as we went into the summer of 64. Right. We got together often because we enjoyed each other's company that grew out of that process, which before that was not part of our practice. We would be at the same place in it. On, off, on many occasions because we had common friends. Betsy Johnson was, now Betsy Eberling was one of those friends. Rick Ricketts was one of those friends. Yeah. So those were all people that I associated with back in those days. And we grew up through high school together. And we were pretty close and pretty involved with one another. So, um, how we actually, so were you sitting there looking at newspapers and magazines? Uh, yes, we would. You know, we'd pull it out of newspapers, we'd pull it out of magazines, we would, you know, time and 
and Rice Magazine had lots of information. We would pull it out, we'd cut out articles, we take each other's position in that regard. And so there was a lot of very thorough deep diving about the positions of the candidates. And of course, we got whatever the position papers were for the candidates because they were available. They were running for office. Right. So we were able to see what their actual documentation was. I, don't, I didn't keep any of that, so I don't have it present. But I seem to recall finding things that the that the Johnson campaign published and use that to define positions. Okay. So talk to me about the actual debates. I'm going to go over that in as much detail as we can. So you had two, de- how many debates? Do- one at Maine East and Maine West? or where- Well, we had, we had multiple presences. Um, I don't recall with any precision. I'm much, I have a much greater recollection of getting ready for these things uh-huh. than I do of the actual events themselves. But I know that we gave speeches and debated at all campuses. So there must have been two events, at least, at each campus. Okay, and it was Maine East and West at the time? Yep. Okay. And, and wait a second, I think Maine North was there too. Was Maine North? No, that was built in the 80s. Or okay. that was built in, that was built later. It was, it was built later after you guys. Yeah, it was built later. Actually, it was getting ready to be built when Maine South was there. Okay. Um, you're right. That, that is true. So there were two campuses that we would go to, West and, and, and of course, East. Now, when, when Hillary was uh, debating, was actually up there, how, would you, how was she? Was she nervous? How, what, what was her disposition when, you would, when she was debating? I didn't sense that she had any discomfort at all. I don't think either of us did because we were having such a good time. And um, so it was. It was a lot of. It, it was for us a lot of fun, and it was a nice way to spend spend the last few months of our junior year together. So uh, when you looked out in the crowd, as much as you recall, how were how were the students uh, responding, or what was the student reaction to uh, Hillary and yourself? Um, to the extent that they were forced to be there, there was some <laughs> ambivalence, of course. <laughs> You know, there's, there's inevitably a group of people in every one of those crowds that just don't care. Right. That are there because their school said you had to be there at that certain time. Uh, there wasn't any bad behavior. Uh, there was some emotion by the people who were tuned in to the political environment at the time. But 64 was before the emotions associated with the anti-war movement and the civil rights movement had fully embedded itself right. into our generation. So we didn't have that kind of deep emotional attachment to it. There was, but there were right. that felt the issues more than others. Speaking of that, now while you guys were doing research, do you recall any specific or any general uh, uh, opinions that Hillary had that she talked about, or passions, or uh, at the time, you know, being she was on the Republican side? Um, when you're preparing, do you remember actually her saying anything as far as her, her her own political beliefs? Well, I have no doubt that she wholeheartedly embraced the very Goldwater positions of, in 1964. And I have no doubt that I wholeheartedly embraced the Lyndon Johnson positions in 1964. Right. Um, I don't find as I recall that time, I don't recall either of us feeling so emotionally attached to it that we had arguments. Right. In fact, I don't think we had a single argument. We just had a good time doing the research. Um, so it was like any other research assignment. If we were in a history class and the teacher says, okay, this half of the class, you're going to take the position of so-and-so on for this historical event, and that half of the class you're going to take the position of so-and-so on that historical event. And if you're a good student, you took your time to get deeply embedded in it, and you, you spoke about it. But you just didn't find yourself, I don't think we found ourselves, 
so deeply involved in it that we started to feel emotionally um, focused. Right. It was much more intellectually focused. So uh, when you were preparing and uh, her mother was making you guys cookies, did uh, did she did she make any comments or did you recall her? Uh, did she help with you with the research or give you guys guidance? Nope. We sat there on the floor. And what I recall was her was her living room, and her mother would bring cookies out and some milk out, and we'd be sitting there on the floor, and we have all of our little clippings spread out and we would take our notes and she would take and try to identify on issue, pick an issue, what Barry Goldwater's stand was on that and I would take and identify what I thought Lyndon Johnson's was and then she would play me Barry Goldwater's and I'd say, well, wait a second, didn't he also say, and she'd play me when I played her Lyndon Johnson's and she'd try to dissect that as well. So we both refined our positions by playing off of one another because it was an intellectual, uh, academic experience as opposed to a politically emotional experience. So you actually kind of uh, spoke, uh, rehearsed out loud some of your positions right there, and then uh, and then she would critique and uh, correct you, or you know, add detail and vice versa. Yes. Okay. As I said. We, we were prepared. This was this is unlike politics of today. I sure, it would be a different world if, if this was the way politics were going today. Uh, this was absolutely our preparing ourselves to go and do whatever the event was that we had next, right? In a manner that uh, did both of us proud. We, you know, we were lifting each other's boats. You know, right, makes sense. Was, so uh, after, talk to me a little bit about um, your involvement or experiences with Hillary after the debates. Um, so that was like uh, the very end of junior year, and then um, what did you guys when you when you what was your interactions with her after that? Say we socialized a lot more that that summer. We socialized a lot more. We looked for opportunities to get together, go out for coffee spend time together, um, it, it, would be a, it would be akin to dating without any emotion attached to it. Uh -huh. I just loved, I loved her company and she apparently liked mine at the time and we enjoyed our conversations and we were tuned in to, into the world in a different way than a lot of other people were. Uh, so because of that, I think we could have great conversations. Uh, so we had a... At that summer, before we went into our senior year, and of course the senior year undermined all of that because she was at Maine South sure. and Maine East, we no yeah. longer had much social contact. But that summer, we took advantage of the fact that this was our last summer in which we'd be classmates. Sure. And we spent a good deal of time together. Where did you guys, uh, do you recall, where do you actually go for coffee? Well, we various. There are various places. I mean, one of the places everybody hung out uh, was a place called Boobies. Right. Uh, which is still there. Bruce Friedman was a, a good friend of mine. Yeah. Um, and so we would go there and hang out with our classmates and go to different places like that. I don't have any uh, clear enough recollections that I can be precise about that. I just mm -hmm. know where our typical haunts were. And then... Uh and you would, and you would tip, typically. Ha was it just the two of you, or you the two, or was it like you and a bun, you and her, and a bunch of other people? It was the two of us going, but we were always with a bunch of other people. I don't remember. You know, we didn't go to movies together and didn't do any of those kind of typical dating type things. Uh huh. And it was one of my favorite summers because of the fact that it was a rich summer in intellectual content. It was a, I was engaged mentally in a way that I hadn't been before. I didn't have a, a girlfriend. Right. Um, and I don't think she had a boyfriend. So we, it was a way to spend our time together. What did uh, you... My closest friend at the time also, like me, didn't have girlfriends, like Steve Goodman and Les Um We would just do things together. Or we would, I'd get together with her and we'd go somewhere that we knew. A lot of other people would be there and have some conversations going and coming. Now, did you did you did you have a car back then? Yes, 
Did you pick her up, or did you meet her there, or what? I picked, I picked her up. Oh, okay. What what kind of car did you have? It was a man. It was a man's job to do the picking. Sure. Um, I, as I recall, until I destroyed it into my senior year, uh-huh. I had a Studebaker Lark. Oh, you did. A yellow Studebaker Lark convertible. What year was that? Don't recall. Okay. I, I can picture it in my head, car. though. And it was a neat car because it was yellow with a black and red top, and it was, it was uh, three on the column. Uh, mm-hmm. It was just a, it was an older model, of course, and um, I loved driving that around in the summertime because we had the top down. Sure. Now, uh, do you recall, like, so you guys would hang out at Boobies. What was, uh, that summer, what was it? Uh, what was the thing that you guys, um, I mean, as a group, or do you recall any topics or things that you guys were just talked a lot about? Well, I think that it turned out to a large extent that the summer of 64 for us was all about being committed to try to remain together as we went to separate schools. Okay. That was a very emotional issue for us as we had spent three years together. Right. And we had become friends, but we were being divided right in half. And for me, it was particularly a lot of very emotional because most of the group of people that I made my friends ended up going to Maine South. Sure. So I didn't have as rich a group of friends from the Maine East group as I did the Maine South. So I was kind of feeling a little left behind. Um, But there was a lot of time that all of us spent kind of focusing on how we're going to do things differently to make sure that once we got to our senior year, we stay in contact, and of course we failed it. Right, right. So following up on that, Howard, you, you said there was a project where you guys did a pin together. Um, was When did when did you guys, uh, what committee was that, the co- what committee was on did you guys tell me a bit more about well, that? Well, I think actually, just so it's not to, together, I don't believe Hillary was involved in it. Okay. It was it was something that grew. I don't recall the genesis of it. I don't do recall that I took the leadership role to go and work with the people who made our class rings mm-hmm. to design a specific pin that is all about the fact that we're linked together. I see. Okay, it was to link you guys together. Okay. Right, and so we were going to have that and distribute it and do things of that nature, but it became economically unfeasible and we never did it. Uh, but I have the drawings that were, I, in fact, I, I recently moved and I had to move them. Oh, okay. But I still have the artist rendering of what was going to come out of that, but it came out of student council. I see, so okay. It was kind of a, a function of our class in student council. Well, when we, I'll follow up, there's, I was wondering if we could get a photo of that. That would be wonderful. I'll have to try to find it again. But I'll look for it. Thanks. So when you were hanging out with her, did it ever cross your mind to kind of ask, were you, were every, uh, were you curious or, uh, about asking her out or, uh, as a girlfriend? Well, I, I considered her in a kind of a, an unusual way, my girlfriend that time. Mm-hmm. Because I, if I had a chance to be with a girl, I could, and, I, and there was a reason to be with a girl, it was Hillary. Sure. Because I enjoyed, because all of this grew out of that effort, which came at the very end of our junior year. Right. So it kind of spun us right into the summer, and my relationship with her was something I truly, and still do, had. So I would characterize her, and in fact, I have characterized her to my children. And when I went to the White House when Bill Clinton was elected, Mm. I even then characterized her among our friends as my junior year high school crush. Right. But I I hasten to add, it had no romantic component to it. Yeah. It was very emotionally attached in the sense that I just enjoyed her company. And right. I believe she enjoyed mine because she did spend time with me. Um, and, but it was not a girlfriend boyfriend in the way you and I were perceived sure. as a boyfriend to young people in high school. Right. 
What was her, as far as, um, you know, her dating experience or, uh, or views or anything like that? So you kind of especially knew her, you, did you know her, you know, did you deal with her freshman, sophomore, and junior year? Or was it primarily yeah. junior year? Okay. What do you know? No, I, I, my, the intensity and the connection was greater in, in, at the end of our junior year. Right. But we were in student government together. We knew each other well. We had shared a lot of friends together. Uh, we encountered each other a lot. But I don't remember, you know, I don't remember Hillary dating a lot of guys. Uh-huh. In fact, if you were to, if I were pressed, I could tell you that I don't know that it, I know anybody that she dated. Right. I don't even know if she went to our junior prom. Um, I don't even remember who I took to the junior prom. <laughs> well, I, it is over 50 years ago, so uh, you're to be forgiven if you don't remember everything. Um, well, that's fantastic. I appreciate um, your time, Howard. I think a couple of... A, color, a couple of other elements that I think add color to this that yeah. I wish to volunteer for you. First yeah. of all, the outcome of, you didn't ask me, and you should have, what was the outcome of the, of the election? Yeah, go ahead. Because nationally, as you know, Lyndon Johnson wiped Barry Goldwater out. Right. Swept the country. Barry Goldwater carried Arizona, and that was it. Hillary killed me. So Hillary clearly won the election. I clearly did not. So she, so the um, Democrats won, and I mean, um, I mean, the Republicans won in in well, our in our mock election. The Republicans won big. Okay. So Hillary did a better job of persuading our classmates um, that. She was right, or Barry Goldwater was right, uh-huh. than I did it, persuading them that Lyndon Johnson was right. I uh, see. So it was clear that Hillary was the victor and I was the defeated. I see. That wasn't true for Barry Goldwater, the actual Barry Goldwater. It right. It was certainly true in our campus. That's true. And one of the comments that I made to her then, that I reminded her of when I saw her the day of the inauguration when Bill Clinton first entered the White House. Yeah. Because I said to Hillary at that time that I expected to have dinner with her in the White House someday. Did you? Um, yes. I, it, it turned out when we were at the White House, I then went on to say to her, but Hillary, this isn't what I had in mind. <laughs> yeah, but I bet she had a, yeah, she might, did she respond to you at the time? <laughs> she, we just laughed. She was yeah, great yeah. Just in due, all in due time, Howard. <laughs> she didn't say that at the time. No, she, I know. That's a long, that's a long time ago. No, I, so I, I know. know that, but I, you know, the, there's there can be some truth to that. Sure. Um, and I and our relationship, to be honest about it, when she ended up going to Yale, I didn't go to Yale. I went to a Big Ten school. So our paths didn't pass each other's there. Then she ended up becoming the wife of a man elected to be governor of the state of Arkansas. So I made a point of not reaching out to her, even though I was looking forward to a chance to see her again, because I didn't want her to think that I was only reaching out to her because she was the first lady of Arkansas. Right. So we didn't connect with one another again until the election day at which point she made a point of reaching out to several of us and asked us to come to Little Rock right. so that she would have her friends present when we were at, when the election took place. Sure. So, so that was when I reconnected with Hillary okay. after all those years. What, a, what an amazing experience. Howard, do you have any other, uh, do you have any um, materials or photos or mementos of your debate? Uh, or pictures other than what's in the yearbooks? Um, I'm afraid I don't. I, I'm not the surprised. <laughs> I've got my yearbook, and I yeah. rely upon that to remind me of those things. But as you know, we all end up moving several times. As we oh, yeah. 
and have our own families and things like that. So I don't have any sort of mementos, and I never contemplated a political career for myself. So right. I had no desire to, to use that as a launching pad. Right. Well, sounds, sounds great. Howard, what I'm going to do is uh, I would love if um, I'll send you an email and um, if you could, if you have a chance, if you could um, take a picture of that pin and if you could shoot that back when you can and I'll send you a, a, a very simple release, but uh, that would be wonderful. Uh, just to kind of, because I think that's one of the little hidden stories that uh, that's come recurring with a lot of the folks that we've talked to is how that was uh, a very painful experience to get separated in, as a class uh, junior year. It was. The school was just acted inappropriately to do that. It would yeah. have been much better if they had started the, the sophomores in there so they'd have two years together but two years apart right right uh, yeah I and hear it was you. a special class as I said you know you, if you go to our pictures you'll see pictures of Steve Goodman and Steve went on to become very prominent as a singer songwriter right um, and and we had a very unique and and wonderful class when we were all together yeah it, it sounds like it we're definitely seeing that when we're talking to folks well, Howard, I really appreciate your time, and um, I will follow up with you shortly here. And then, uh, if you could send us a, uh, those pics or anything like that, I would uh, would definitely like to add that to the historical record. Um, and I, you're right; I did not, um, I'm not aware of this debate. Um, so I'm really glad you were able to take the time to uh, talk to uh, talk to me and properly record this for history. What what an experience. And then to see that she's out there debating right now, 50 years later, running for president. Amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. <laughs> it is. Uh, God bless you for that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Howard. You have a great rest of your day. You too. Thank you. Take care.